Hi, secondary math three students. So not all of you are available to come to Zoom. Um, I'm trying to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. If a majority of you guys need another time, I can totally do that. Um, but I've had several come in to Zoom and say, I need help with these questions. So I'm just gonna do a quick video of coming linear problems on our geometry module. So one of them is, Given a sphere with a radius of 2, what's the mass? Which seems very um, daunting. So let's go ahead and um, try this out. So first of all, you have to find the volume. And you should know volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so we're going to do 4 thirds pi, but instead of radius, we're going to put that 2, because that's what they gave us. And we're going to put that into our calculator. If you don't already have it, you should get the Calculate 84 app. Um, that would help you to be able to put this in correctly. So I've got 4 thirds pi, and then I'm going to do my 2 cubed. So I get 33.51. Okay, then right here's my equation. So I think it gives you some other density, like 4 point something, but I'm going to give you 5.7. If my density is 5.7, and then I just calculate this volume to be 33.51, I'm wanting to find the mass. And the only way that I can find mass is by doing the opposite, because it says m divided by 33.51, I'm going to multiply by 33.51. This is my advice to you, is because this 33.51 is not, it's not just that, there's all these other numbers, I would suggest that you leave it in and then say times 5.7. And so I get this long number, 191. So this is where we've got to be careful because we can't put this into our calculator or into the answer document. It's going to count it wrong. So here's just a quick little, again, calculate 84. It works on Apple and Android. But if this said to the nearest whole number, what I would look for is right here, to the right, if it's at five or higher, it would go up. If it's not, it stays the same. So because it's 0 0.0, we would just leave it as 191. If it said the tenths, this is the tenths, and again, that's zero, and so my answer would be 191.0. Then, looking at the next one, if it asked me for the hundredths, that's right here, but because that 8 is bigger than 5, my answer would be 191.01. .01. And then last but not least, if it asks for the thousandths, that's right here, this 8. And because that's also greater than 5, I would round it up to 191.009. Okay, so a, a, a computer is the one grading this. So you really do need to follow the directions where it says you know, is it the tenths, the hundredths? Because unfortunately, you could write 191, but really they wanted this one and you'd get it wrong. So please be careful, read the directions and do your best. Here's the next problem, same thing. They want um, a mass if this shape, which is a rectangular prism, and so now you have to know this volume is length times width times height. So I would do 7 times 10 times 20, which is 1,400. And um, did I get a picture of that? Well, we're just going to make up a number now. So let's say that the density of this one is like, I don't know, uh, 3.2. And we want the mass. So once again, if I want the mass, because it says m divided by 1400, I'm going to multiply by 1400 on both sides. So times 3.2. And I get 4,480. 4, because that's just a straight whole number, that's all I would put in. It's done. Okay, the next one is a population question and where it says, like we have a certain density in a certain population, what's the radius, sorry, in a circular area? And so we know that the equation is density is population over area because it's a circle, we're gonna do pi r squared and we're just gonna plug this information in. So since it says my density is 40,000, I'm gonna put 40,000 right here. 
And then it, because it says 3.2 million, it means 3,200,000 over pi r squared. Okay, because it says divided by pi r squared, I'm going to multiply by pi r squared on both sides. And then, um, uh, let me rewrite it, I suppose. Pi r squared, 40,000 equals that 3.2 million. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 40,000. And so now I've got pi r squared equals uh, one, two, one, two, divided by 40, one, two, so yeah, I get 80. Mm -hmm. And then because it says pi r squared equals 80, I would divide both sides by pi. So in my calculator, I've already got this, and I'm going to hit divide by pi. And I get 25.46, 25.46. And because it says r squared, I'm going to take the square root. So the square root of my number, I get 5.04. And I believe it said to do to the nearest whole number, and so of course we would just do five. Okay, so that's our first page. Again, you can always pause and rewind because this is a video. So if you're not getting it, rewind, go back, watch it again. Um, so they don't outright ask you for perimeter and area of these specific things, but they do want like those cross, um, where it's like a cross section. And so they are gonna ask you for perimeter and area. And it might look like the same question, like it might say we've got this rectangular prism that is three by five by seven. And then they slice it like this. And so that would be the dimensions of the five by seven. So like right here, this is what it really would, if you take it out of the picture, it's really a five by seven like this. So perimeter, we would do five plus seven plus five plus seven all the way around, right? And so that's 12 and 12 or 24. If we did the area, we would say five times seven is 35. So be careful. It could, you could have the exact same question twice. And once it says perimeter, once it says area, and you've got to pay attention, please. So again, these are some equations you're supposed to know. Area of a rectangle is length times width of a circle is pi r squared. Volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. A cylinder or a circular prism is pi r squared height. A sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And then we've got the cone. Sorry, this is not the best pictures. And you can definitely uh, Google these if you need to. But a cone is 1 third pi r squared height. And a pyramid is 1 third length times width times height. Which leads us to this next question. Um, it says something like this, like we have a rectangular, uh, excuse me, a rectangular or excuse me, square pyramid that has an edge of two. And so it's got um, the one third. And if it says the edge, it's assuming that you know that means two. So that's my length and width. And then that my height here of the pyramid is five. And so in your calculator, I would do uh, one third like that times two times two times five, and I get 6.6 .6 repeating. And then what it says is it doesn't say something like double. It says something like the height is add, they add three to the height. So I would say that's now eight. And they said something like we're going to add one to the edge. And so now that's three. And so... I would have one third length times width times height. Again, that edge being three and three. So one third of three times three times eight should be 24. Because the third should cancel out, but let's just put in times three times three times eight. So 24. And then it says something like, what's the difference? Difference means to subtract. And so I would do 24 subtract 6.6 .6 repeating. So I would do 24 subtract 6 point, and I would make sure that goes all the way across to show that it's re uh, continuous. And so I've got 17.3. Now, if they said to the tenths, that's what we'd say. If it said to the hundredths, we would say this. To the thousandths, right? And you can go back and rewind if you need help with those words. 
Okay, moving on to the next one is dimensions. So um, dimensions is like when a, um, when we talk about area, area is two dimensions, like length times width or whatever. Volume is three dimensional, like length times width times height. Okay, so um, when they say something like I'm doubling, Dublin. When I'm doubling the area, that means I have two dimensions that I'm timesing by two or two squared, which means that the resulting area would be times four. Same thing in the volume. I have three dimensions, so I'm timesing by two in the length, the width, and the height, right? Times two times two times two or two cubed, which is eight. So in the same way, if I'm tripling Right, if I'm tripling, um, now that's three squared, so it's nine times the values, or if it's three, then that's three cubed, which is now 27, and so on and so forth. If it's times five, four squared is 20, oh, 16. I, my mind just left, and then four cubed should be 64, but let's just check, yeah. So times 64. So it just depends. If it's an area, you're multiplying it twice or squaring it because it's two dimensions, which makes sense, right? If you remember areas like centimeters squared, inches squared, whatever. Volume is cubed because it's three dimensional. So whatever your base is, whatever you're multiplying by, and then cube it. Okay, the next one is this guy where we have a marble slab and we're cutting it at a diagonal. So it's going like this, it's cutting through, and what it's creating right here is this, this rectangle. And sometimes, again, it'll ask me for the perimeter or it might ask me for area. So let's do both, but first, first, we can see that this is 50, but we need this guy. So we can see each one of those is 30. You can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared and do 30 squared plus 30 squared equals c squared and you can do all these wonderful things. Or Ms. Cooper taught you the shortcut. x, x, x rad 2. So this is 30 rad 2. Okay. I guess I should. Okay, so if I did 30 rad 2, you guys would get 42.42. .42, so about right there. 42.42, .42. and if I did this guy, 30 squared plus 30 squared is 1800, and then when I take the square root of that number, I also get 42.42. 42. So it's the same thing as the Pythagorean theorem, it's just a shortcut. Okay, so we recognize now that our new cut of our cross section is 30 rad two by 50. So for me to find the perimeter, I would do 30 rad 2 plus 50 plus 30 rad 2 plus 50. For my area, I would multiply them. In your calculator, you just need to double check that you're getting out of the radical. Do you see that little arrow? So I gotta go my arrow, get it out. Plus 50 plus 30 rad 2 out, plus 50. So my perimeter would be 184.85 and then my uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. my area times 50 or it might be easier to do 50 times 30 radical 2 whatever either way you're gonna get 21 21.32 and again make sure you're checking to see if they're asking you for tenths or hundredths or thousandths or whatever. Okay, and then it looks like I got one more, one more little page that I would like to cover with you. Um, so on the cross sections, you guys did really good when they gave you the picture, right? When they said like horizontal, horizontal means like this, like it cut it, like uh, think Fruit Ninja. Um, oh, I hate those, I'm sorry that you see those. <laughs> had to rip some papers out to help you out. Okay, anyway, so when I cut that, um, imagine that it's like this ninja warrior, right? And that would, of course, create a circle. Okay, if I horizontally cut this guy, okay, well, let's just keep going. Vertical is going straight down. 
right? And so if I cut this straight down, you can see it's going to create a rectangle. Okay, and so the question is, what if it's parallel or perpendicular or parallel? Um, what they're saying is some people visualize the can like this, like I do, and some people like this, don't know why, but they do. So parallel with the base, so this is its base. So if it's parallel, which you guys are seeing lines like this, of course it's like this, right? That's parallel. They are all parallel, so that would create a circle. If it was perpendicular to the base though, of a cylinder, that means I'm cutting it this way, which of course creates that rectangle. Okay, now you do need to be careful on the revolutions. Some of you are going way too hard and they're asking you for the radius and then you give them the volume. So please read the directions. But if I was to show you these, the difference between these two pictures, I hope you could see that they are going to spin differently. So what I suggest is writing it down and then showing yourself, like if I had, oh, I still don't have a sticky note down here. But what's happening is this is going around this way and this one's going around this way. And so right here, if I go around this, oh, you can almost see it creates a cylinder right here. And so you can see that my this is my radius. This would be a radius of three with a height of seven. Whereas this one is going this way. Ooh, can you almost see it? I can. Uh, right here, right? It's looking like this now. And so now my radius is seven with a height of three. I'm gonna trust that you guys can put those into equations and know how to do it. But that's the difference between them is which way that line is going is which way it's spinning. Okay, the last one I'm gonna cover is this little guy. Let me find my example if you don't mind. Um, because I had several students ask me about this guy. So it's like a, it looks like almost like a basketball field or a bullet or something like that. Um, so most of you guys would see that right here, this, here's my line. So just like before, right, this is going to create that cylinder. And so it's going to have a radius of two and a height of five. And so when I put it into my surface area equation, I get 87.96. But right here, this is not necessarily a cone, it's curved, right? And so it's, it's going to be half of a sphere. So same thing, my radius is two. And so if I put it, that into my equation, it says that the surface area of the sphere is 50.27, but because I want it half, now my surface area is only 25.135. And so for me to get the total, I would add those two together. So 25.135 and 87.96, and I get 113.095, and I think it asks you for the tenths on this one. So that nine would round it up to 113.1. Okay, well, that's the end. Again, if you have questions, please come to our Zoom meetings at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. I have to send out new ones each day. Um, so you'll have to on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then, um, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, you could call me at 385-646-2219. I miss you guys. I hope you're doing well and the earthquakes aren't freaking you out as much as me. And don't forget to treat yourself. Get yourself a fizz or get yourself a Taco Bell or do what you need to to make yourself happy. Have a good day.